record this, record this um, presentation so it'll be available on our YouTube channel for viewing later on. And I don't know how long we'll have it up there, but um, if you want to see it and it's not there, just let someone know. So Louisa Evers is presenting this talk um, on behalf of Golden Eagle Audubon Society. And I get to introduce her tonight. My name is Cynthia Wallace, and I'm the executive director of Golden Eagle Audubon. And we are the local chapter and serving Southwest Idaho. Ways to engage with us along with this class are to subscribe to our e-newsletter and become a member. Always a good way to support local bird conservation and check out our event calendar. We're doing so many things every month and lots of field trips and classes like this one. And there's lots of lots of things on our website, resources and other things. And just a little plug that we're turned 50 this year. So we're pretty excited about that. And we're posting a lot on social media. If you are interested in any of that too, feel free to join, join our conversations there too. You can do the next slide there, Louisa. Trying to. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, another way to support us is, like I said, we're excited about our 50th anniversary, and you can order t-shirts from us. We are just going to run this probably one more time, and you'll have, so you can have the shirts before the holidays. So, okay. And if you drink coffee and you're unaware, uh, we buy coffee from a triple certified source. And there's six types to choose from and three sizes. And you order and once a month, Danette Henderson, a volunteer, Golden Eagle Audubon, um, delivers to your door. So you can feel really good about the coffee that you're drinking and supporting us at the same time. And it's it's very good high quality coffee, I can attest. So we just have a few um, classes that we wanted to point out. And most of our classes and field trips are free. So this one is, as you can see, photography with Ken Miracle, who's just great at donating his time to Golden Eagle and to you to help share his knowledge. So there's that one. And then another, yes. And then so almost every month we do a monthly program and we're excited about this month coming up here on the 15th, we'll learn from Terry Rich about his trip to India and the birds that he saw there. So that should be a nice presentation. And another free class, Birding 101. That is, uh, yeah, a really, really good class too in Meridian. And then some classes we do charge for. This is more of an advanced class for winter gull identification. And there's some um, field trips there to support the, the classroom part of it afterwards. And then finally, for a little plug about the Christmas bird count. And there on the screen are dates for different places, Boise's December 26th. And you can see the other, other ones there. And you can learn more about all four of those on our website and then register, or not register, but fill out an interest form, we're calling it, um, on our website there for the Boise one. Okay, okay so 
What you've been waiting for then is this winter ducks class and Louisa Evers is presenting this. She did a great job. I got a sneak peek on Friday of everything here. She did a really, really nice job putting this together for you and I hope you enjoy it. Louisa is on the board of Golden Eagle Audubon and she's chair of the education committee and just really, really appreciate all you do, Louisa. Um, so about two and a half hours ago, Dondi Black sent Louisa's handout. So if you did not get that, you might wanna check your inbox for that, your email and your spam folder. But if you did not get it, just go ahead in the chat and you can send me your email and I'll email it to you as Louisa's talking. The handout is goes well with the presentation. So you'll wanna have it on hand. And also um, I will be taking, kind of helping Louisa organize questions and stuff in the chat. So as, as you have questions as she's going along, feel free to write those in the chat or just think of them. And at the end, um, she can take those questions. So with that, I will hand it over to Louisa and thank you all for coming and joining us tonight. Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our class on winter ducks. Uh, just so you know, there will be three quizzes in this class. So make sure you have paper and something to write with. The first and second quizzes each cover three ducks and the final quiz has 12 ducks. Uh, these quizzes are for your use only. You're not graded on them. Uh, and like, a, like uh, Cynthia said, hopefully everybody got a copy of the handout to help you follow along and for use in the quizzes. So these are like open handout quizzes. Um, and the handout does list the ducks in the order that I cover them in this class. So first you need to know that ducks are part of the waterfowl family. Uh, that family includes swans and geese as well as the ducks. These are generally web-footed critters. Uh, they're generally gregarious. In other words, they like to form flocks uh, and they're largely aquatic. And of the waterfowl, ducks are the most colorful and the sexes differ in appearance. So to identify ducks, first thing to look for is size. How large or small is the duck? The mallard, which are the uh, the two larger birds standing up, there's a male on the left and a female on the right. Um, that's our largest common duck and the green winged tail, which is this little duck in the middle between the two mallards is the smallest. So this slide kind of gives you an idea of the size range. And all the other duck species I'll cover uh, range between these two in size. So the next thing to look for is, is uh, shape. Um, we'll start with heads, necks, and bills. Uh, so the shape of the head and the bill, the length of the neck are the next element to consider. So is the head of the duck round, oval, triangular, or somewhat square? Do they have a tuft, point, or crest on the head? Is the forehead sharp or does it blend into the bill? Is the bill large, small, or medium in size? Is the neck short or long, thick or thin? And be aware the shape of the head can change depending on whether the feathers on the crown or the crest are raised or lowered. And here's some examples of head, neck, and bill shapes. Uh, the mallard, which is this duck on the upper left, has a round head, a sloping forehead, and a medium-sized bill. The ruddy duck, which is in the mid upper middle, has an almost oval to has an oval to almost triangular head with a forehead that blends into the bill, giving it a ski slope appearance. The hooded merganser on the upper right has a thin pointed bill and a large crest that can be raised or lowered. Northern shoveler down here in the lower left um, has a round head, a sloping head, forehead, and most importantly, an enormous bill. The gadwall in the middle of the lower part has a round to squarish head. Uh, the forehead's sharply downsloped and it has a somewhat dainty bill, especially when you compare it to the mallard. 
The second photo of the gadwall here in the lower right shows how raising the forehead feathers can change the shape of the head. And so remember that the shape of a duck can vary depending on whether the feathers are fluffed out in the cold, slicked down after diving, a crest is raised or lowered, and the neck extended or pulled in. The gadwall's neck on both of these lower photos is extended, while the hooded merganser in the upper right and the ruddy duck in the upper middle, the neck is pulled in. So you look at the shape of the body as well. So is it long like the common merganser here in the upper left, compact like the buffle, buffle head in the upper right, or somewhere in between like the widgeon in the lower part? Also pay attention to how high or low in the water the bird is sitting. And color and color patterns can change depending on season, sunlight, and weather. The pattern that's most constant is the pattern of light and dark or black and white on a duck. In most lighting conditions, the white on a duck can be seen at long distances. To quickly identify ducks, look not only at shape and size, but where the white is or isn't on a duck. Uh, the ducks illustrated in these, these nine images, these are all the male ducks. I don't have any uh, similar ones for the female ducks, and I don't have one for every duck we're gonna cover in the class. Um, so white is most commonly seen on male ducks and tends to be more limited, muted, or absent in females with a couple of exceptions. For female ducks at a longer distance, you'll need to focus on size, shape, and what male the female is near. So in summary for duck identification, look at the size of the duck, its shape, and the location of any white. And the various species of ducks are typically found in specific habitats, especially when feeding. So is the water deep or shallow? Is it still like in a pond or a reservoir, or is it moving such as in a river or a stream? Is the area marshy with cattails, bulrushes, and other tall plants growing in the water, or is it open water with no obvious plants growing out of it? And lastly, look at its behavior. A very basic behavior is whether it is a dabbling duck that feeds on or near the surface of the water, or a diving duck that goes underwater. So dabbling ducks feed by tipping up on the uh, surface, on the water, and by feeding on or near the surface. They can dive, but they rarely do so. They walk easily on land and can spring directly into the air from the water. They always hold their tails clear of the water. And many dabbling ducks have colorful iridescent speculums, which are the secondary flight feathers in the rear of the wing. Because they feed on vegetation in the bottom, dabbling ducks are typically restricted to shallow water. So in this photo of a mallard, the area that's circled in red on the wing, that's the speculum. It can especially, excuse me, it typically consists of all or part of the secondary flight feathers on the rear of the wing. And they can be iridescent or a solid color. Iridescent speculums are often blue or green and white speculums are not iridescent. And the speculum can often help you identify a duck in flight. So the next six ducks I'm gonna cover are all dabbling ducks. And we'll start with the mallard, which is the most common duck and present year round. Because it's so common, mallards are used as a basis of comparison for all of the species of ducks. Get to know the mallard well, and you're on the way to identifying ducks that are different. Mallards are large ducks with large, long bodies. They typically ride high in the water. The heads are round with a gently sloping forehead um, and a moderately large bill. The male mallard, this duck on the right, has a green head, which can appear blue or black in certain light. It's got this white ring around the base. There's a key white feature. Um, it also has white in the tail. Note also the characteristic curl here on top of the mallard's tail, which was the source of the ducktail hairdo in the 50s. 
The bill of the male is yellow. Um, sometimes it has a little bit green. The breast is kind of this dark, rich, dark brown. And the rear end is black, which helps that white tail stand out. The main body is gray with a brownish cast. The female mallard, the duck on the left, also has a white tail, although it can be difficult to notice since mallard tails are short. Like this particular duck, it's hard to see that there actually is white in that tail. Her bill is mottled orange and brown or black, and she has an eye stripe that runs through her eye uh, with this lighter area up above the eye. Otherwise, she's a brown duck. The speculum on both uh, sexes is blue to purple in appearance, depending on the light, with white stripes above and below. Mallards can be found almost anywhere, ponds, reservoirs, streams, rivers, marshy areas, and open water. When in rivers and streams, they are usually near the banks in shallower water when feeding, and they often mix with other ducks. Our next duck is the wood duck. This is one of our flashiest ducks. Wood ducks are intermediate in size between a mallard and a teal. Their heads are boxy in appearance with a noticeable crest or tuft, depending on how, what you want to call that, on the back. The neck is relatively long and thin and the tail is long for a duck. The tail really stands out on these ducks. And it's broad. The males, the, the duck on the left is a male, has a white stripe outlining the crest, a bridle, that's what this is called, these, these white shapes around the bill and the cheek, um, on the face and neck, and thin white in the feathers outlining the sides. The eye and the bill are red, and the bill is outlined in black. The head is an iridescent green. You can see the iridescence in this particular photo. The breast is a chestnut brown, which becomes speckled in the front. The sides below that white stripe are buffy, and the back is dark with blue highlights. The female, the duck on the left, has this teardrop-shaped area of white around the eye, so an eye ring and it has the same bridle as the male, although it can be harder to see. Um, otherwise, she's brown and gray. She's got a gray head and neck and a more or less a brown body uh, with a speckled breast. The speculum is blue. You can see a little bit of the speculum here on the female where my cursor is. And unlike other duck species, wood ducks tend to bob their heads back and forth like a pigeon uh, while they're swimming. Wood ducks tend to be somewhat to very shy, so they tend to prefer shallow water near overhanging vegetation and trees, or tall emergent vegetation, such as cattails and bulrushes. They can be found on small streams, ponds, small lakes, and marshes. Wood ducks are typically found in small groups instead of large flocks. Uh, because they nest in cavities, you can find wood ducks in trees. So if you see a duck in a tree, your first thought might be, it's a wood duck. Our next duck is the American Widgeon. This is a medium-sized, somewhat compact duck with a round head, a steeply sloping forehead, and a short blue bill. Both the male and the female have that blue bill. Um, the male, the head of the ma um, male, Widgeon, and there's there's three male widgeons in this photo that are easily seen. Um, has this broad green stripe that expands that extends from the eye and into the neck here, uh, with the remainder of the face being gray. And most noticeably, they have this big, broad white to buffy crown stripe on their heads. Um, there's also some white in the forewing. You can see a little bit of it on these male ducks just peeking out and has white in the flanks towards the tail here. Um, their bodies are a pale cinnamon, 
So they look kind of pinkish and they have a black rear end. The females, this duck right here, kind of in the middle is a female. They don't have any white. They do have the gray head and they have these black feathers around the eye, which uh, I always thought of it as giving them kind of a punched in the face look. And their body is kind of this warm, light brown to orangey color with black patterning on the back. Widgeons are typically found on lakes, ponds, reservoirs, flooded fields, marshes, and slow moving portions of rivers where they nibble on plants at the water surface or tip up to con consume plants on the bottom. Widgeons also graze on land. They're very vocal and they give a very distinctive two note whistle. So here's a quick reminder about looking for where the white is. At this point, we've covered the mallard, which is up here in the upper left uh, with this white ring neck, white in the tail, a little bit of white in the flank, uh, and the wood duck, which is in the center. Uh, I don't have images for all these ducks I'm covering. The next two ducks I cover that are on this slide are the green winged teal, which is down here in the lower right, the gadwall, which is just above the green winged teal in the middle, and the northern shoveler, which is just above that. So everything on the right I'll be covering in the next three slides. So the green winged teal is our smallest common duck with short stocky bodies, large heads, steeply sloping foreheads, a short neck, and a moderately sized bill. The males, the duck on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left, that's a male, um, have a white shoulder stripe and a buffy stripe in the tail, which is much more obvious during the breeding season, which for ducks is in the winter. The head is cinnamon colored with a green band that runs from the eye to the back of the head. And sometimes you can see a very thin white outline. Uh, this breast is buffy. The sides and the back are gray. The female, which is the, the duck on the right, is your basic brown duck. She doesn't have any real distinctive white, but she usually has that buffy tail stripe, which can stand out and she has a dark line through the eye. The bills on both sexes are black and the speculum is green. And on a female on the right, you can see a little bit of that speculum showing. It's just a brilliant green in the right light. The green winged teal often feed on surface vegetation in the water and near the shore, and they tip up to feed on bottom plants. Due to their size, they're typically found in very shallow water, puddles, and flooded fields. They'll seek shelter in marshy areas and under overhanging shrubs and trees. Although they may look plain, gadwalls are actually quite elegant ducks. They're slightly smaller than the mallard and they have a squarish head, steep foreheads and a relatively thinner bill than the mallard. The males, there's a male on each of these in the photo on the left, the male is in the front, and in the photo on the right, the male is in the back. Anyway, they have this black patch on the tail and a dark bill. Otherwise, they're grayish, grayish brown, and if you look at them very closely, their feathers have very intricate patterns on them. The females, and in this case, in the photo on the left, the female is in the rear, and on the right, she's in the front. Uh, they have brown bodies and grayish heads, and a gray bill with orange sides. Oh, sometimes they look more, more orange than anything. And female gadwalls can be easily mistaken for female mallards, but they have a plainer face. They don't have that real eye, noticeable eye line with the light area above the eye. Um, and they have a little bit different coloring to their bill than the um, female mallard. They don't typically don't have quite as much brown modeled in. And unlike the female mallard, the female gadwall does not have white in her tail. And both species have small white, have a small white speculum, which may or may not be visible. And in this case, the male on the left, the female on the right, you can see that speculum. 
gadwalls sometimes try to steal food from coots and other ducks, but otherwise they feed in a typical dabbling manner. Look for gadwall in ponds, reservoirs, slow moving water, and marshes. And our, our last dabbling duck is the northern shoveler. With their green heads, and there's a male in the back of this, the, the rear bird on this photo is the male, and the bird uh, just ahead of it, or in front of it, is the female. With that green head, the northern shoveler could be mistaken for a male mallard until you see that bill. That bill is just huge. They have the largest bill of the freshwater ducks. And that bill makes it a bit front heavy, so the tail tends to be a little higher out of the water than most other ducks. The head of the shoveler is more oval than round, with a gently sloping forehead that blends into the bill. And the neck is relatively short and stout, which you might expect having to deal with that big bill. The males have green heads. They have a white breast, which is different from the mallard, which has the chocolate breast. And this kind of extends up into their sides. Um, and it doesn't really show it, but they just barely see an edge of it here on this photo. They do have white flanks. Uh, the sides of the bird are chestnut instead of that kind of brownie gray that a mallard has, and has a black tail. Note also the male has a yellow eye. The females are your basic brown duck. They have a small eye stripe, which isn't terribly noticeable, and orange mottled bills, similar to the female mallards, but there was such a much bigger bill. And the speculum is powdery blue. Shovelers often feed head down without tipping up, sweeping their bills from side to side to filter out invertebrates and seeds. And you may see groups of shovelers, sometimes quite large, swimming head down in circles to stir up food items in the water. So look for shovelers in shallow wetlands, ponds, lakes, flooded fields, and marshy areas. And I wish I had a video, but here's a photo of shovelers engaging in that spinning behavior where they're swimming around in a circle to stir things up. So with that, we'll move to our first quiz. Okay, this first quiz bird, we have a duck in a tree. You'll notice he has a red eye and a red bill that's outlined in black. He has a crest that's outlined in white and a white bridle. So which duck is this? So to check yourself, this is the wood duck, number two on the list, or on the handout. Okay, in this uh, quiz, we're looking at the ducks, a line of ducks that are in the foreground there. Uh, we have some ducks with uh, blue bills, a broad crown stripe, a green eye stripe that extends to the back of the neck. The sides are kind of uh, pinkish, um, has white on the flanks and a black tail. So which duck is this? Hopefully everyone identified this as the American Widgeon. In our last little quiz, we have two ducks, a male and a female, both with ginormous bills. Uh, the male has a green head, a yellow eye, white on the breast, and a chestnut side. And the female is your basic brown duck. So this is the Northern Shoveler. So we're gonna move on to our next series of ducks. These are the diving ducks. Diving ducks feed by diving underwater to catch food in the water column or to find food on the bottom. They can also dabble, but usually don't. Diving ducks eat small animals in the water as well as plants. 
Diving means that their legs are typically set far back on their bodies, so they're awkward on land. And their wings are relatively small for their body size, requiring that they run along the water surface in order to get airborne. Their speculums typically lack the brilliant colors of the dabbling ducks, and they're typically found in deeper water. So our first diving duck um, is something that has an atypical bill for a duck. These, both of these, uh, this duck and the next duck are this, have that same bill. Uh, one thing to be aware of when you're trying to identify a diver versus a dabbler is that when actively feeding, the tail of a diving duck is at or near the water surface and can be difficult to see. In this image, you can't really see the tails of either of these ducks, the male on the left or the female on the right, because they're actively feeding. Um, in addition, the mergansers have bills that don't look like a typical duck bill. They're long, narrow, and serrated, uh, which allows them to catch fish. The mergansers are fish-eating ducks. So the common merganser is a long-bodied and relatively long-necked duck. The head of the common merganser is oval with a moderately sloping forehead into the bill. Both sexes have red bills. The males, and it's the male on the left, typically has a dark head and back, and in certain light, the head of the male will look green. Females, the duck on the right is a female, uh, have a white chin, a white breast, and a white speculum. And interestingly enough, they have a crest, whereas the male does not. And the crest is, their head is usually red. And they have a gray body. And the crest of the female can seem flattened, changing the shape of the head when she surfaces. In winter, mergansers often form tight groups and they'll do this synchronized fishing thing where they all more or less dive at once and then more or less surface at once. And look for mergansers on rivers and larger lakes. Our next merganser is the hooded merganser, which is also a pretty flashy duck. Uh, the hooded merganser is more compact than the common merganser. And it's intermediate in size between a mallard and a green wing teal, a little closer to the teal in size. Both males and females have large crests that change the head shape depending on whether they are raised or lowered. Raised, their heads look very large and round. Lowered, their heads look smaller and more oval. The males, the duck on the right is the male, they have this large white patch in the crest that's outlined in black, a white breast and a white shoulder stripe, and white feathers on the back. So here's that white in the crest, white breast, white shoulder stripe, and some feathers that are edged in white on the back. Um, their heads, necks, and backs are black, and they have two black shoulder stripes with the white stripe in between the two black shoulder stripes. Their sides are chocolate brown, and the bill is black, and that male has a yellow eye. The females are basically shades of brown. Their backs are darker than their bodies and breasts, and they do have those feathers with the white edging on them on their backs. Uh, her eye is yellow, but it's a dull yellow, so it's kind of hard to see that. And her bill is brown, outlined with yellow edges. So hooded mergansers prefer smaller streams and the edges of lakes and larger ponds where they can find shelter in overhanging vegetation. They rarely form large groups. They're usually seen in high numbers in some locations, but more commonly they're singles, pairs, or small groups of three to four. The bufflehead is our smallest diving duck, similar in size to a green winged teal. In fact, I had to look up to figure out which was the smaller duck. These compact ducks have a round head with a moderate slope to their small bills and short necks. The males, the duck in the front is a male, has this large white patch from the eye to the back of the head. Um, otherwise, the head is dark. There's a white breast and body and tail uh, and a dark back. 
They actually have white in the wings, but you can't really see the wings when they're folded like this. In the right light, you can see green and purple highlights in the head. You just barely make them out in this particular photo. The females, which is the duck in the back, are dark brown. And they have this white oval cheek patch. And they have a small white patch on the speculum, which you can see in this particular image, uh, but that may or may not be visible. So the white cheek patch is a little more diagnostic. So buffle heads feed on invertebrates, mollusks, and crustaceans in the water column and bottom. They can be found in small groups or large flocks on ponds, lakes, reservoirs, and slow-moving water. Our next duck is the ringneck duck. You can be forgiven for thinking the ringneck duck is poorly named. A lot of people think so. The ring on the neck is rarely visible. A name change to the ring-billed duck has been proposed many times to the naming authorities and has always been turned down. Ringneck ducks are medium-sized ducks closer to a mallard in size. These ducks have a very distinctive head shape, almost triangular with a noticeable point on the top of their heads. The bill on both sexes is blue-gray with a white band near the tip and around the base. The white in the base, and there's three males here, right and center, is actually in the base of the bill. In the female, which is the duck, the leftmost duck, it's in the feathers surrounding the bill. The bands are wider and much more noticeable in the male than in the female. The males have a black head, neck, breast, back, and rear, and gray sides. And they have a white shoulder stripe, which unfortunately this image doesn't show up really well, but this area that's kind of like blown out in terms of color, that's where that white shoulder stripe is. And they also have, the males have a yellow eye. The females are shades of brown, darker on the head and back than on the breast and sides. Um, and they have a white ring around the eye. This is an important, important characteristic to tell them apart from our next duck. At rest, ring neck ducks hold their short tails up at about a 45 degree angle. So they're typically found on ponds, smaller lakes, and slow moving water, and can form large flocks. These ducks feed on mollusks, invertebrates, and submerged vegetation. Okay, it's relatively easy to confuse lesser scalps and ring neck ducks as the pattern of light and dark on the males is similar, and the two species are essentially the same size. The males of both have a blue bill and a yellow eye. The point on the lesser scalp, there's a male on the left and a female on the right, is small and it's on the back of the head rather than on the top. So the head looks more rounded with a tiny little point to it. They lack the white rings on the bill and the shoulder stripe. The male scalp has a gray back, not a dark back. Um, and the sides are a lighter gray than on the ring neck duck. The female scalp is browner than the female ring neck, especially in the face, and they usually have a broader white band around the bill. Lesser scalps and ring neck ducks are often found together in the winter, although ring necks in our area usually outnumber the scalps. Look for lesser scalps wherever you find ring neck ducks. So to kind of help you out, here is a comparison between the ring neck and the lesser scalp, the males of both species. So you can see how different that head shape is, a triangular shape on the uh, ring neck duck on the left versus a more rounded shape with a small little point on the back of the head on the duck on the right. There's rings on the bill on the ring neck duck on the left, nothing on the scalp on the right. You see the back is much darker on the ring neck than it is on the scalp on the right. And unfortunately, because of the lighting, you can't really see the difference in the side, but you do see the shoulder stripe a little better on this ring neck duck on the left. Um, and there's no shoulder stripe on the scalp. So once again, a reminder to think about where the white is. For the diving ducks, I've covered the buffle head, which is in the lower middle. 
and the ringneck duck, which is in the upper middle on the slide. And coming up that are on the slide are the common golden eye and the ruddy duck, which are over here on the left. So the common golden eye. It's aptly named as both sexes have yellow eyes. These are small compact ducks with short necks and largish heads. Like the ring neck duck, the head of the common golden eye is pointed, giving them a triangular head shape with a steep forehead. The bills are small. Males have a prominent round uh, cheek patch between the eye and the bill. There's a male here on the right edge and a male kind of in the center with his head thrown back. Um, this, is, this is their uh, mating uh, courtship behavior. <laughs> Um, anyway, they, they have white breasts and sides and large white patches in the wings that can be seen with the wings folded. So you see this kind of black and white striping. That's the general area of the wing. The head, neck, and back are black, but the head and neck can appear iridescent green in the right, right light. The females, there's three females in this picture, one towards the right and two on the left have a white speculum. You can kind of see it on this uh, rear, rear female on the left, which may or may not be visible, but otherwise they have brown heads and gray, heads and necks and gray bodies. And the tip of the female's bill is yellow, that, although that can be hard to see at a distance. And the head of both sexes appears to narrow abruptly at the neck, making the neck appear thin. So golden eyes are usually found in rivers and streams and large flocks during the winter, but also on deeper ponds and lakes. They often dive as a group. In flight, their wings make a distinctive whistling sound similar to that made by the wings of a morning dove. And our last diving duck here is the ruddy duck. This is a small compact duck with an oval head gently sloping forehead and a large bill that appears to curve upward, giving their faces a ski jump shape in profile. Ruddy ducks are smaller than common golden eyes and larger than buffalo heads. When at rest, and this bottom photo shows a pair of them at rest, they hold their long tails at about a 45 to nearly 90 degree angle. Unlike most duck species, ruddy ducks do not develop their more colorful breeding plumage until spring. In the winter, the male, and this is a male on the right, has this large white cheek patch, a dark cap, and gray-brown bodies and a gray bill. The female, the duck on the left, I think I said that was left, but the male is on the right. Female's on the left. She has a light face. It's not really white, but it's light, and it can look whitish in certain light. Anyway, she has this dark stripe below the eye, a dark cap, a gray bill, and a gray bound body, similar in color to the male. Ruddy ducks tend to prefer ponds, lakes, slow-moving water, and they feed on aquatic invertebrates. They feed most actively at night, so you may see them sleeping on the surface, such as in this bottom photo, with their heads tucked and their tails cocked up. So, are we ready to move into the final quiz? So here's our first diver quiz. Oh, this isn't the final quiz, I'm sorry. This is the, the diver quiz. So here's our first diver. We have um, two male ducks here. They have red bills, long bodies, uh, dark heads, light breasts and body, kind of a dark back. And the rightmost one, the head is already, you can kind of see a greenish cast to it. So which one is this one? Hopefully everyone realized that this was the common merganser. Here's our next diver. This is a small compact duck 
with a small bill. He's got some iridescence in his face and neck, a big white patch from his eye to around the back of his head. He's got a dark back and a white breast and sides. Hopefully everyone identified this as the buffle head. And here's our next diver duck. Um, here's a duck, he has a yellow eye. It's a little bit hard to see, but he does have a triangular head. He's got a white band on the tip of the bill and at the base of the bill, and the bill is blue. Otherwise he has a dark head and neck and a dark back and uh, gray sides. This is the ring neck duck. So where to find ducks? You've got a lot of places to find ducks here in the Treasure Valley. Uh, in the Boise area, look at, check out High Hidden Lakes, Catherine Alberson Park, the many parks along the Boise Greenbelt. Uh, in the Nampa area, good place is Wilson Springs Ponds and over at Lake Lowell, particularly the area around the lower dam and a place called Murphy's Neck. Uh, Emmett Sewage Ponds is a good place. Uh, further out, uh, check out um, the Fort Boise Wildlife Management Area, which is in Canyon County. Ted Trueblood Wildlife Management Area, which is in Elmore County. Several spots along the Snake River. Uh, the CJ Strike Reservoir has several places. Uh, that's in Owyhee County and the Bruno Dunes State Park, which is also in Owyhee County. These are all good places. If you really wanna see common golden eyes and uh, common mergansers, you're, the best places to look are the Boise River and the Snake River. Uh, for wood ducks, Wilson Springs Ponds, Esther Simplot Park, and I didn't have it here, but uh, Catherine Albertson Park are good places to see wood ducks. Uh, just be aware that wood duck hunting is allowed on Lake Lowell, um, the areas along the Snake River and the lower reaches of the Boise River. So you might wanna make sure you have some blaze orange on you. And aside from regular bird field guides, here's a couple of additional resources to help you with duck identification. These three foldouts on the left are available from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and they're printed on waterproof material. They emphasize where's the white, um, and on the right is the Crossley ID guide for waterfowl. This isn't something you can readily take into the field, although they do have, it does include a little um, insert that you can take to the field, but it shows you images of ducks in the field to help you link the duck to its typical habitat, and it shows you birds in numerous positions. So here's kind of an example of some of the illustrations you can see in the Crossley ID guide. Uh, and sometimes he has some things in there to help you identify uh, things that could be confusers, like in this lesser scalp, there's a picture of a female greater scalp that you can compare with the female lesser scalp. Um, most species have multiple pages of illustrations, while others have only one or two. For example, for this lesser scalp, there's four pages. Um, rarer species may only have a page or part of a page. Like I said, the book comes with this water resistant folding guide you can take to the field and it does include quizzes for the different species to help you uh, hone your identification skills. So and with that, hopefully everyone is ready for the final quiz. I will be describing the ducks in the quiz uh, but I won't go over what they are until we, we've gone through the quiz. So hopefully everyone's ready for this one. Here's our first duck. This is a female compact duck, has kind of a ski slope um, shape to the head and bill. 
She's got a, a light face with a dark line underneath the eye. Otherwise, it's just kind of a, a brown duck with a gray bill. Here's our quiz bird two. Uh, we've got a male duck. There's a small bill. He's got a big white patch that runs from the eye around the back of the head. Um, and an otherwise dark face, um, white neck, breast, and sides. Because this one has his wing open, you can see the white in the wing. And kind of over to the right of him, not in focus, is a female which has an oval cheek patch. Quiz bird three, we have a male duck. It's got a triangular head, a white eye, white around the uh, near the tip of the bill and around the base of the bill with a bluish bill. It's got a white shoulder stripe, a dark back, and gray sides. Quiz bird four, this is a male. He's got a buffy tail stripe. Uh, you just barely see it, but he's got a white shoulder stripe, a cinnamon head, and a green stripe that runs from his eye to the back of his head, and a black bill. Otherwise, kind of like a gray body. Here's our next quiz bird. This duck has a more or less a round head with a little point on the back of the head, a yellow eye, a blue bill, a gray back, and a light gray side. Uh, the head and the breast are dark and the tail is dark. Here we have a female duck with a ginormous bill and otherwise a plain brown duck. Duck number seven. This is a fairly compact duck. Uh, a small bill, a triangular head with a yellow eye, a white cheek patch, uh, white on the sides and in the wing, and dark back. Quiz bird eight, all three of these ducks are the same duck. They're all three males. They have a buffy tail stripe, a white shoulder stripe, cinnamon colored head, green that goes from the eye to the back of the head, and otherwise uh, gray bodies. And you can't see their bills, but their bills are black. This is two female ducks. They're a little bit hard to see. Um, they have a white speculum. Otherwise, they're, they're fairly plain. Their bills are somewhat dainty. And they're uh, orange and brown or black. And there's no white in their tail.
Hopefully this duck is fairly easy for folks to recognize. We're looking at three males. One is tipped up. Um, and you can see one has a green head with a white ring around the neck, a yellow bill, white in the tail, and a body that's kind of a, a warm gray-brown. Next to the last duck, this is a female. She has a red bill, a red head with a crest, and a gray body, and can't see it very well, but she does have a white chin. And our last duck, we have a male and a female here. The male has a yellow eye, a long, thin, black bill, a crest that has a white edged in black. He's got two black shoulder stripes, one white shoulder stripe, white in the breast, and some white edging on the feathers in his back. The female also has a crest. Uh, she's basically shades of brown, and her bill is brownish gray edged in yellow. Okay, hopefully everybody got through that. Let's go check these out. Of course, this is a female ruddy duck. The buffle head, male and female. Ring neck duck. Green wing teal. Lesser scalp. Northern shoveler. Number seven is the common golden eye. Eight, uh, green wing teal again. Nine, gadwall. Ten, mallard. Eleven, common merganser. And twelve, hooded merganser. Hopefully everyone did great with that, especially, uh, uh, and I hope that that handout came in useful. So at this point, are there any questions? Wow, that was really great, Louisa. Thank you so much. I learned a lot and it's going to really come in handy my next walk along the river, which is hopefully tomorrow. Um, we did have one question from Gypsy who said, I'm just a beginner. I'm curious why many winter male and female ducks have a showy speculum. Thanks. Um, that showy speculum is actually present year round. Um, just said that I covered this in winter ducks because in the winter, the males are in their breeding plumage, so they're much, much easier to identify. Uh, in the summertime, the males go into what is called eclipse plumage, and it can be really hard to figure out what species of duck you're looking at just from the colors, because they, they kind of just turn into brown ducks, just like the females. So, but those speculums, those colorful speculums are present year round. Great. Well, I had a question. So I've heard that there can be some interbreeding with wild ducks and domesticated ducks. Is that true? Yes, uh, particularly with mallards. Mallards will mate with anything. Um, and a lot of the domestic ducks were bred from mallards, but even other ducks will hybridize. I put this picture here on the question. If you look at this duck carefully, it looks weird. 
And that's because it's a hybrid between a green winged teal and an American widgeon. So it has like the head looks kind of like a green winged teal and it's color, but that bill is wrong. It's it's got blue in it like a widgeon. And if you look at the body, there's some pinkish body feathers. So the body coloring is is kind of a mix of the green winged teal and the American widgeon. And the the tail stripe isn't really buffy. It's there, but it's an odd color. I don't know what color I would call that. And you can get hybrids from other species of ducks. Oh, thank you. Um, and Gypsy again, do the colorful speculums serve a purpose? Do they, so they can notice and identify each other? I don't know the answer to that. So seems like the the thing that would be most identifying, at least for the males in the winter, is the their breeding plumage. But beyond that, I, I don't know what the purpose of those uh, colorful speculums are. And there are some species of, of ducks like, I, I didn't cover them, but the cinnamon teal and the blue winged teal, the speculums look identical. So who knows? And I, I have one more question. Do you want to plug your um, field trip? Oh, yeah. Uh, this Wednesday, I am doing a field trip to Hyatt Hidden Lakes. Um, I know there are some different species of ducks. I'm a little surprised uh, that there's not the usual diversity that there is. I don't know if they're, they, they're late because fall is so warm and whether these, these recent fronts are starting to push more of them in, but it's a good place to go see ducks. Um, and we're opening up an extra five slots for the people in this class. So if you want to attend, hurry up and sign. <laughs> go to the Golden Eagle website and sign up. That's right. All right, are there any other questions? If someone's not comfortable in the chat, you can just go ahead and unmute yourself and shout it out too. That's nice, Debbie. Well, okay, then. Thank you so much again, Melissa. That was just really informative and I learned a ton and, and feel a lot more comfortable now. So okay. I'm sure other people do as well. So thank you all for attending and thanks again, Louisa. Thank you. And in thank case you're you. interested, I took this picture at Wilson Springs Ponds. <laughs> so you, you'll see the wood ducks in the trees eating the uh, Russian olive berries. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you and good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>